Today we're actually looking at the brand new race series of carburetors built by Proform. They're a brand new design. Basically when you buy these carburetors, they will come with a base plate gasket and then they will have a little card with all your specs. The ones that you guys are looking at right now, the, I have the E85 version on the right, that one's for my truck, and then I have the gasoline version on the left. I really wanted the black version in E85, but they just don't have the updated version of the race series in black and purple yet. But hopefully later on they will and I'll be able to modify one of those as well. On the surface, they look very similar to their older style carburetors that they had. The first one being the obvious radius entry for the Venturis and also the booster design is a little bit updated as well. I don't know if you guys can tell, but these are actually two-step boosters. They actually have a cut right above the inlet of where the fuel goes in and that's the same for the E85 version. But I will say that the boosters for the E85 version and the gasoline version are different. I don't know if that is a design because their gasoline and E85 or because that's the new booster design this is the older booster design regardless they both look like they would work fairly well some other revisions compared to their old carburetors are the fact that they now have a trap door in the fuel bowl and that goes for the older race series and the newer race series they have this trap door and what this allows it to do is one it'll allow you to have more fuel capacity inside the fuel bowls and then two it creates an area a pocket where it prevents fuel from sloshing left and right these carburetors also come in factory with high flow accelerator pump screws. This one comes with, I believe, a 31 squirter front and rear, and the E85 version comes with a 37 squirter front and rear. They both come factory with adjustable air bleeds, but the tuning on the air bleeds is different. According to this card right here, we're looking at a 7035 split for the gasoline, and then for the E85 version, we're looking at a 6528 split. The needle and seats on both of these carbs are different. Because E85 flows 30% more fuel, you're going to need a larger needle and seat. I already went through that situation when I built my custom carb on my Turbo LS. The needle and seats that come with the E85 version, these are 130, so 130 thousandths inlet. And the needle and seat that come in the gasoline version are 110. Power valves on both are 4.5, which is a little low for me, if especially if it's going on a street car. But for a race carb, that's right around ballpark where it should be. A really cool feature that I like about these carbs is that if you guys check out the rear, they have an adjustment for the secondary idle. I hate the old style carburetors that the only way you can adjust the secondary idle is through this set screw that's right here. They still have this set screw, but now you don't have to remove the carburetor to adjust the secondary idle. You could just do so on this um, equipped fitting that's right here. The E85 version has the same idle adjustment on the secondary side, and the accelerator pumps front and rear are the same, which I believe are 30 cc's. At first glance, the base plates look almost exactly the same, but there are a few key differences. The first one being that the older race series has a single pattern for the base plate, and the newer race series has a oval pattern, and this will allow you to bolt this up to either a 4150 or a 4500 flange uh, intake. I believe Richard Holdner has done some testing on and what he found was when you install a 4150 carburetor on a 4500 flange intake, it actually does make more power. So it does make sense why Proform would decide to make these carburetors for dual pattern. I'm going to have to flip over the carburetor so you guys can see the next difference between these two base plates. Right here, you're going to notice that you have vacuum ports. One of them is for ported vacuum. One of them is for manifold vacuum. And the last one is for power brakes or PCV. If you look on the other side, you have the same thing, either power brakes or PCV. If you look at the newer race carburetor, it doesn't have any vacuum ports. It doesn't have vacuum ports on top, and it doesn't have any vacuum ports on the bottom. And that's because race cars usually don't have power brakes, and they usually don't have vacuum advanced distributors or anything like that that would require you to have a vacuum they definitely don't have pcv systems another reason why this is important is because if you're building a carburetor for boost you're going to want to avoid using this carburetor because of these vacuum ports on my current carburetor i actually had to replace the base plate because the base plate that came factory on that carburetor had these vacuum fittings that i could not remove without damaging the base plate so i actually had picked up a proform billet base plate online that didn't have the vacuum ports and then i was able to build it out that way so if i was starting from scratch i would go with this one that doesn't have any of the vacuum ports but if those vacuum ports are important you could always get the older style you just don't have that dual pattern ability on the base plate 
So before we move on to the parts you guys really want to see, which is the tuning aspect, I want to show you guys something really interesting about these base plates. So I've got the older race series on the left, and then I got the updated race series on the right. So like I said earlier, this base plate was machined for vacuum ports, and this base plate was not. But one thing I really want to show you guys is that when you flip these base plates over, you'll see that you have this cross-sectional area that has been machined out with an X, and that allows for cylinder balancing in terms of vacuum signal, especially when you're running a dual-plane intake. If you look at the bottom side of the updated carburetor, you'll see that they have the same X, but it's also been machined out, and the threads have been cut into it. That's actually really cool because what it allows you to do is it allows you to tap into that empty cavity. I'll go over in detail what this is for in a later video, but I want to show you a few more things on the base plate before we move on and that would be the fact that the new base plate is actually machined to accept a throttle position sensor bracket or any other type of bracket like a micro switch or anything like that that you guys can screw that on directly into the base plate whereas the older race series you cannot. So this is actually a really cool feature because if you wanted to run an electronic style transmission, you need a way to install a throttle position sensor on your carburetor. And sometimes you have to buy an auxiliary bracket and bolt it onto the side of the carburetor and then that'll let you run a TPS. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to run the bracket directly onto the base plate so you can install a TPS. And then by doing that, you can run a electronic style transmission or like I said, a micro switch or anything like that. So this is a really cool feature that they included when they updated this base plate. So if you look on top, we have stainless steel polished throttle blades. Those are being held down by low profile pan head screws. And then that's bolted onto a reduced diameter throttle shaft. So as you guys can see, they're not the half moon throttle shafts that we're used to seeing in the older style carburetors. The main purpose of that is to reduce the restriction going into the plenum and it allows for better flow of the carburetor. Something I actually just realized it right now when I was looking at these base plates side by side is that the updated base plate is actually taller than the older style base plate by over a hundred thousands. A hundred thousands doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're trying to straighten out the airflow going into the intake manifold, that extra hundred thousands can make a serious impact on air turbulence when it goes into the plenum. While we're up here, I want to show you guys that both base plates have power valve protections on the primary side. There is no power valve protection on the secondary side, and that is because the metering blocks, and we're going to get to those in a second, they're actually not drilled for a secondary power valve. They're drilled and tapped to have the power valve installed, but just installing them won't allow you to use a secondary power valve. I have the mechanical secondary version, but if you guys look on the side of the main body, these main bodies are actually drilled and tapped to accept uh, a secondary vacuum diaphragm for vacuum secondary operated carburetors. And in fact, these carburetors can be purchased in a mechanical secondary like I got or in a vacuum secondary with and without the choke horn. I'll leave links to all that in the description. I got the mechanical secondary versions uh, for two reasons. One of them because the charger is uh, mainly a drag racing car. And second, the truck is actually blow through carbureted, which means that any kind of vacuum operated anything will not work under boost. That's why I went mechanical secondaries on both the charger and on the truck.